Well, it's go time for fantasy football. You're making the push to the playoffs, and we've got your waiver wire pickups on today's show. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell so you can be alerted of our live streams, all new episodes, and leave a comment below. Enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in, one and all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Can't change it up on me. I can do what I want. I'm a grown man. That's fair, but there will be riots in the streets. Tuesday, November 8th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore is here. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Deucers as well. Roaming Deucers Alley. <laughs> in their uh, chairs? <laughs> yeah, they just roll around. and You know, they're twisting from side to side. Playing bumper chairs. No, I'm... I'm <laughs> It's kind of hyperbolic because it's not really an alley either. I feel like it should. We have like it's not a back alley between like a couple of buildings. I'm, it's the it's where the producers are. But but we have an alley yeah. right on the other side of that wall. Why are they in this room with us? Why don't we just make producers out. alley Ooh. right outside, rain or sun? Just put them in the alley. <laughs> you come for like a. Postal service, yeah, thing? yeah, like rain or sleep. realizing that the only thing we have here it would be rain or sun. Right, those are the two weather <laughs> yes. options in Arizona. Snow every ten years or so, a light dusting. Welcome into the show. Had another miserable Monday night. Oh, oh I'm sorry oh, to hear man. that. That makes three out of the last four weeks. The Monday night did not treat me well. You should. Uh... You should get in on those uh, showdown modes. You win another Millie Maker. I'll bet that would cheer up your spirits. I tried to do that, too, and I don't think I won the million. Oh, I didn't even check. You probably did. I didn't even <laughs> check. That would that would brighten my spirits. I should look into that. I As uh, someone who's had Lamar Jackson on his team for quite a while now, Monday night Lamar Jackson always equals sadness. Just... Just understand this. The Monday Night Miracle for Lamar does not come through. We have waivers on today's show, welcoming some players into the fold. We have the quarterback streamers, some NFL news to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, we do. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, subscribe, click the bell, tune in. You definitely don't want to miss Sunday Live with Mike, the fantasy hitman, every Sunday before the games kick off. Because, uh, look, more information equals better decisions. You have the maximum amount of information right before games kick off, and you can make some last-minute pivots to make your Mondays better than mine. Uh, <laughs> JoinTheFoot.com is our fantasy football community. Last night, the Ravens stomped the Saints 27-13. Uh, to 13. Uh, The game wasn't even that close. Uh, he took a, took a last-second Juwan Johnson stepped out of bounds. No, he didn't. Free touchdown when they, everyone just let him run. He, it's, it was weird. He definitely stepped out of bounds. Because there were, <laughs> yeah, like there were certain, At least it seemed that way. There were certain angles where the heel was clearly out of bounds, but then they would go to the other camera and it was behind, like there was someone, you know, in the way of the view. And again, it's how do we not have the technology to just get every shot time sync them up and go okay well this is where he is in this play let's look at the other angle and you go okay it was clearly out because he because he was clearly out of bounds the nfl does not have the money for that mike uh they're you know they're trying to too busy putting it into yeah, the pockets trying to stuff the pockets <laughs> a little bit uh that being said i'm glad he got the touchdown it was like it was mercy it was like a kindness of saying you know this is a home uh you know a home game for the saints so we'll give you this one yeah and if they hadn't Andy Dalton would have been at about 170 yards, no touchdowns, one pick, took 1,400 sacks in this game. And uh, it was bad for pretty much everybody. Alvin Kamara, nine for 30, only how many targets? Four? 
Yeah, if they had not thrown that touchdown, they probably would have thrown another pass to Kamara, and my parlay would have hit. <laughs> Chris Olave, six for 71 on nine targets. On the other side, Kenyon Drake had a huge day, 24 for 93, two touchdowns. Isaiah likely led the receiving room <laughs> with 24 receiving yards and a touchdown. This is a problem. So if he was your pivot, you got the touchdown. Lamar was just 12 for 22 for 133 yards. Uh, he ran for 82. I believe I needed something like 26 points to win in the listener league. That didn't get done. Because Monday night, Lamar Jackson, you don't get what you need. Were there, uh, I mean, Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Jackson uh, pulled his hamstring on for a new team. Yeah. That's what I'm going to start saying. Okay, how many teams can he pull his hamstring on? Because he has to be setting a record. Oh, it's it's been all of them so far that he's played for. And I think he will play into his 40s. His hamstrings can take more damage. The my issue, What if he made a coffee table book about, like, this is where the I, training staffs? Oh. And he just comments on the, the personalities of all the different – because he's – Nobody knows the training staffs of if so many teams like Quite Deshaun like Jackson. Yeah. The the problem with the, with Deshaun Jackson for me, it's like it was a great story. It was I mean, many, many years of, of awesome fantasy action from Deshaun Jackson. Just a really fun player to watch. The guy I mean, on his first catch, he was right back to Deshaun Jackson of just like, Yeah, I'm the best player on the field. No one could oh! You're like <laughs> Let's let's get through a game, DJX, before you start with all of that stuff again. And, and we didn't get there. And uh, Brooks, you're you're younger than Deshaun Jackson, right? Yeah, yeah, that's something. And 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 your hamstrings both intact today. Yeah, well done. Say little known fact: Brooks is actually faster. Yeah. than Deshaun Jackson. He's paid a lot. You to yeah, be you'd be surprised what yeah. wealth can do for your uh, your forty <laughs> I mean, time. You saw me on that beach race. Oh yeah! You oh, that we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good rebuttal. A real, fl uh, real I was, flex. I was telling a joke, but he was racing. He was racing Al. <laughs> yeah, remember oh. <laughs> Al was in the very back. Of I mean, the beach it's all race. comparison, it's just, right? He was so far behind everyone. <laughs> it's not true. All righty, let's get Watch into the, the video. get into the, <laughs> get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Love the part of the show where no one knows what we're talking about, but uh, if you some people do, yeah. If you go back in time a little ways, we once upon a time improvised a uh, a race from a restaurant to the ocean for a thousand dollars, and and the producers, uh, all of our staff, they participated. Yeah, and, and we Brooke, filmed and it, and Brooks won, and Jeremy was in the very, very <laughs> not way true. back. <laughs> Oh my god! So, <laughs> so I nothing has messed him up more psychologically than the perception in in this in this video. I was recording the tail end of the race and commentating it, and I thought Jeremy was at the very back, and I'm putting him on blast. Turns out it wasn't Jeremy it was at nice. all. But if you go watch the video and you don't have this commentary right now, you will believe that Jeremy yep. was just absolutely sucking wind. <laughs> Uh, here's some news for you. The Indianapolis Colts fired Frank Reich yesterday yeah. happened during the show. We reacted to it. What we didn't react to was the hiring of Jeff Saturday, former center <laughs> with 0.0, .0 college and NFL coaching experience, uh, to go along with a very sensational, uh, press conference where owner, Owner of the Indianapolis Colts celebrating the fact that his new NFL head coach, what he loves most about him is that he has no experience. And so he can't rely and go back to analytics. Uh, you can't make that mistake. Jeff said, look. He doesn't have fear. Yeah, he doesn't have the fear. And here's, we'll start the conversation here. Jeff Saturday, uh, good NFL player. I'm sure he is beloved in the Indianapolis community. But the Colts, uh, look, we, we've seen the, the potential price tag for the Manders, right? Have you guys seen this? $7 billion. Thing? So now Jeff Saturday goes from no coaching experience to being the coach of a at least a $7 billion franchise. The stakes of what this man is in charge of are so 
ridiculously high, and he has never done it. Never, ever done it. Like this, my mind was exploding into a million pieces last night because the press conference just kept getting worse and worse and worse, the things that Jim Ursay was saying. And I posted a tweet with the, with the video, and I'm like, Colts fans, I get, if you want to stay a Colts fan, I get it. But this is your path. If you want out, <laughs> you can take this. Because, and I started thinking about it more because, of course, there's the fanatics that come out and I'm getting pushed back of like, what well, is your fair weather fans, yada, yada. And I started thinking about this. Like, fandom is a, this is a contract. Like, the team owes you. you they, they don't just get your, they should not get your undying loyalty no matter what, in my opinion, because you're giving them your time, your resources, and your money. And if they're just spewing bull crap at you, saying we're not a serious franchise, we don't even care about competing, all of these other people who work for the Colts, this is how they're supposed to get another job, is that they come through and they show what they can do, and now Jeff Saturday just goes to the front of the line and says, I'm the... Uh, would, it, would you have felt the same? Genuine question. Okay, go. Peyton Manning's named the head coach. It's slightly different in the fact that he is a quarterback and at the, at the time was given a ton of credit for saying he was basically the coach of the offense on the field. And like they apparently there were some reports the Colts have tried to get Saturday in to be an offensive line coach, mm -hmm. and he's turned them down. But now he's, he was holding yeah. out. Yeah. So Smart now he's, man. Just, All he wants the head coaching job. Like to to come out as the owner of a, of a franchise and say this. No, I know that this is the guy for the job. Maybe we all get blown away and somehow Jeff Saturday is a great head coach. Is, but the fact that he has no experience and all these other people have dedicated their professional lives to being a coach. It's and like this Steve guy's like Nash. It, Nash was named the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And how did that work out? And it's just it it was my mind was blown. It's very upsetting. I feel bad for the people who are fans of the Colts cuz they are not taking this serious. At least the rest of the season. Like people, they have all your money already. All those season ticket holders. They got your money and they don't give a crap. You're going to go watch This is this might be Mike's biggest I was so box moment on the show ever. I, I was just I was furious at what what they are doing. I love ridiculous. it. I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> the I am hiring a, or the me theater? being a, uh, both. Um, <laughs> no, I I'm a big fan of chaos uh, <laughs> well, in the, the NFL. So this is great news. Um, that being said, I'm not quite as bullish that I know this is terrible. I remember the last time that I thought that there was this comical hire of someone that was like younger than some of the players he's coaching sure. and absurd. Uh, and then that turned out to be Sean McVay. Right. So, but no, I it, get it. He was in his resume. Absolutely. Coaching experience. I, I, I completely understand that, but it's not like Jeff Saturday doesn't know football as well as anyone on the planet. No coaching experience, but he knows football and the NFL as well as anybody. Um, He's been coached. The, the biggest <laughs> problem for the Colts is their offensive line. Like, that was their strength, and all of a sudden, th they can't stop anybody from getting to the quarterback, no matter who the quarterback is. So I think it's – but it's fascinating to me because um, I'm not sure what's better for the Colts, to win or to lose. You so can be a head coach and not be responsible for – play calls on the offense and defensive side. You can be a figure sure. a figurehead yes. inspirational head coach. Yes, you can be the leader, but to be the leader halfway through a season for these players who He the, was he is the interim, by the way. Yeah, 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 but but he's the interim coach for the remainder of the season more than likely. They are they were already doomed with Sam Ellinger as the quarterback in that offensive line, but now you have these other players on the team who may like the fringe players that may never get another NFL job because they are on. They are so doomed to the defense is going to be it, – it'll be rough. Be, they're a good defense, but they will be so stressed because of the offense being so poor. And it's just it – okay. it's, it's insanity to me what is going on. I couldn't imagine being one of the other coordinators who, it, yeah, exactly. who have a, a ton of coaching experience, two of them former head coaching experience on, on the staff, and now being told – 
that's your boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, He's in charge now. That's the part that's like really tough to swallow. It's the dysfunction from the top that already put Sam Ellinger in at quarterback. Yeah. Yes. That now is being extended to um, playing with his toys. I mean, it kind of feels that way. Uh, Romeo Dobbs expected to miss four to six weeks. High ankle sprain. Mm. Aaron Jones expected to play, but keep an eye on it this week. Josh Allen still being evaluated, expected to be limited this week. He thinks he can play through it. Yeah, the Aaron Jones and Josh Allen injuries are the biggest ones to watch for this week. Oftentimes on a Tuesday morning, people say they're fine, they're going to play, and then as the week goes on, no, they're not and they don't. So those are the two biggest fantasy-relevant names. We did miss the headline that comes along with the Jeff Saturday news, which is we are all now eligible to be head coaches. Yeah. Oh, heck so yeah. So I've been, you know, this Cliff situation, we think, oh, bring in Frank Reich. Sean Payton doesn't have a job. We're now an option. Yeah. And I, th I think we should be the first we could go, triad yeah. head coach. Sure. Oh, I thought one of us was taking offense, one was taking defense. Yeah, let's just do it. We're let's a triple get weird. head coach? Absolutely. So do we stand directly next to each other, all the same headsets? And... I want one pair of pants that we all have <laughs> legs in, like a, like a three-legged race, except this is a six-legged race. I was just imagining three guys, some of them calling timeout, some of them not calling timeout. Um the play call we have to whisper Do you realize how brutal each other? it will be for jeff saturday when he makes a mistake yes and that's yeah there, there's oh. there's so much they should have named himself head coach first owner <laughs> head coach he should have been roaming the sidelines on his own also um because jeff saturday was a pundit working for espn and sharing his opinions this was about seven days ago when he talked about how uh bad the raiders yeah are. the raiders are awful the raiders tweet. are awful was his tweet he is now the head coach playing against the Raiders this week, and that will be on their whiteboards. In for his sure. defense. Well, that's true. That's, that's, it's yeah. very true. He's not wrong. All right. Speaking Monday, Dan Campbell, Mike, said that the Lions are hopeful, hopeful that they could give DeAndre Swift, quote, a little more work this week. He had 16% snaps uh, in week nine, six chances at doing something. I mean, this is better than Dan Campbell said last week when. Too much? Yeah, he said he gave him too much, and they. Pulled back, uh, so it's positive, but I don't – it's very, very difficult to play. I saw week. someone today um, asking me about should I trade Swift? Should I try to go get some – you know, worried, you know, should I go get Michael Carter? And I, I think that Swift's upside is worth holding on to. I know we've got the fears of what happened last year where he never really got back involved, but I'm still – holding on to Swift I'm not trying to trade him unless it can be as we've said many times unless you could trade up at running back but I'm yeah, not just trading sideways or that's impossible trying right to get now. yeah no I, I agree I don't think you can Zeke news Jerry Jones says it's anticipated he'll be ready to go for Sunday there's another owner that likes to yes, talk he does to the media Elijah Mitchell designated to return from IR uh, Debo Samuel returned to practice on Monday. That's good news if you had missed a week of Debo. And uh, Panthers said P.J. Walker will start Thursday against the Falcons. I like that our show doc says Panther confirmed. Ooh. Yes, a <laughs> small 150-pound <laughs> Panther feline. Confirmed. Somewhere there's just a Panther and he nods. in the building. He's just nodding. Hey, uh, who, is P.J. Walker starting? Meow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Panthers. That's where we're at this morning. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Did you say Sir Purr? Yeah, do you not know the story of Sir Purr? With, with he's, Robbie Anderson? Yeah, he, he, uh, oh, because he's it's the, the mascot. mascot. Yeah, so Panther Sir Purr? is the mascot. And there's a video of Robbie Anderson on the on – the, uh, uh, just sitting down, like in the middle of a game, and someone's talking about Sir Purr, and Robbie Anderson's like, "What? <laughs> it's a really, really funny it is video." Funny. He has no idea who his mascot is. That's, at I all. mean, and to be fair, that's that's a pretty awful name, <laughs> Sir Purr. That's not. I mean, what what do you name? What's what's your name? I think it's Super. <laughs> I think that I don't. I just think there are other options for the for the kitty cat. Okay. Sir Purr. Does he have like? Like a like a cloak or like a like a <laughs> I don't know like a crown because if it's a crown or something Sir Purr I what can a, get behind or what about a sword a, what about a cape yeah That's a cape I, I could okay. do that yeah I don't know if Sir you, Purr has a you cape. could be a Sir at that point <laughs> what is happening today all right we are into the waivers. 
Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right, we have Bengals, Patriots, Jets, and Ravens heading into the bye. So it's time to make some arrangements. What wide receivers are we welcoming into the fold? Who's your favorite pickups this week? Uh, he is rostered in most leagues, but the first name to just throw out there, I know people are always like, oh, he's not available. Just go check. Yep. Make sure Joshua Palmer is not on your waivers, or if he is, pick him up. He would be my number one pickup uh, this week at running back or wide receiver. If he is available, he's been great when given the opportunities. He was disappointing the first time we saw him uh, without Keenan Allen, and then that became the letter of the law in our mind. Like, oh, he can't step up. But he has. He's been really solid. Last week, 10 targets, 8 for 106. Um, so he's the number one pickup. But now let's talk about people who are much more likely to be on your waivers. Yeah, Wanda Robinson coming off the bye week, heading into a game against Houston at home. Uh, Wandale should be uh, a target if you need a spot start. If you have somebody going on by like T Higgins or Jacoby Myers, Garrett Wilson, those yeah. wideouts heading into the bye week. Yeah, I think he was probably dropped in a lot of places. He was picked up beforehand, had a kind of disappointing week before the bye. But the fact that they are going into the bye, he is a rookie. He should be fully integrated into their game plan. The matchup is great. He would probably be my number one pickup. If you had to start someone this week, Andy, let me ask you between oh. these two people. Um, because it's not for me. I'll let you like uh, sweep up. You know your yeah. what do they call it the uh, in baseball? Clean clean up. Yeah, you'll back clean up here. Um, <laughs> McCall Hartman has been on a hot streak. He, I, I was surprised. I didn't even realize. I know Andy, you've been playing him in one of your leagues, so you've been intimately familiar. Four weeks in a row with double-digit fantasy points and half PPR scoring, would you rather have the single-game upside of McCole Hardman with playing with Patrick Mahomes, or because the gap isn't that big between him and Wandale Robinson, would you rather take the hopeful season-long upside of Wandale? Uh, if I was going season long, I'd take Wandale, just hoping that you get a more secure primary target. But if it's a single week, I probably still roll McColl. He's on a hot streak, like you said. Like we, we are still living in the world of promise with Wandale, and this is something that, like, yes, he scored a touchdown in his first game back. That was good enough for wide receiver twenty-seven. He's been the wide receiver thirty-nine and seventy-two since then. Um, he's still a short area target player. His yards per catch are 8.3, 7.5 the last two weeks. So 8.9 on the season. So I think you, you really are looking at a situation where in a full PPR, if you want to go Wandale this week against Houston, I don't care. That's fine. They can probably beat Houston with three pass attempts from Daniel Jones. That's kind of part of the issue. Sure. You get, you might get 60 pass attempts from Patrick Mahomes. So I like Hardman a little bit more in the near term and um you know if you want to play the gamble with Wandale later that's fine and Wandale after Houston has Detroit so you got a couple good sure. uh, weeks if you're looking uh, as a longer term play and for a spot start this week I mean Donovan Peoples Jones has quietly kind of like Hardman he hasn't had the big blow up game like Hardman cuz he's not scored a single touchdown on the year but in the last 5 games you know 9.67, 9.6, 8 8.1, and 10.1. Those are those are very usable flex numbers from a wide receiver, and he gets to play the Miami Dolphins, who just they're the the Dolphins are in such a good position for us as fantasy players because their their offense cannot be stopped. Meanwhile, their defense doesn't do the stopping, so it just turns into these these really good situations. And and uh, Peoples Jones and Amari Cooper are in a very nice spot this week. I want to talk about Odell Beckham Jr. and philosophies on him for fantasy purposes Man. because, to me, when you look at his situation and Jerry Jones again this morning saying Odell Beckham would look great in the Dallas uniform, which is a possibility, and he's supposed to be cleared from his ACL injury. I feel like you have to check, you know, this is like a, a lock to get him, you know, to unlock a valuable fantasy asset, you have to check a bunch of boxes. You have to have, okay, he's healthy from injury. He has to find a roster. He has to get enough snaps. He has to be on a team that you have confidence would involve him. Like, there's a lot of check boxes that you have to 
go through in order to even consider playing Odell Beckham after he signs with the team. So considering you can't put him on IR and how valuable bench spots are heading into week 10, I guess I'm just curious where you weigh the risk reward of adding him to the roster. I did it a couple weeks ago. I dropped him the next day because I realized <laughs> I can't. Af I thought I could afford right. the roster spot. I couldn't afford the roster spot. Well, the difference now is that he has been cleared. Uh, Jay Glazer was reporting that he is now medically cleared to be expected, full. No, expected, no, expected by the end of the week. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm saying this should be the week that uh, he's going out trying to sign on a team and, and we should have more news. So a couple weeks ago when you picked him up, it was a big question mark. I've already put in my waivers. So I feel confident in what I'm doing with Odell Beckham. I put Which in is a, what? I put in a $0 bid on Odell Beckham. I okay. will probably not get him. I think he's worth having on a roster spot. But probably, if we're just playing probabilities, which is primarily what we do in fantasy football, trying to win more than we lose, you're probably going to have someone waste money on Odell Beckham. So I'm going to do it for free and see if I can... Uh, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather be the guy looking a week ahead at my defenses... Yeah, and picking them up on uh, for no money, uh, rather than holding Beckham because I hope he's a flex in three weeks. And the, what I'm looking at for Beckham is because what I mean, let's just let's go through the let's go through the experiment. Okay, signs with Dallas tomorrow. Okay, when is he in your lineup? You hope he is two weeks. in your lineup in two weeks. Yeah. Okay, and that's that is the best case. And that's still outcome. a team that's got you know Ceedee Lamb. Michael Gallup, yeah. Dalton Schultz. That's I was going to run through the teams here because look, Odell Beckham. Green, Green Bay is a better situation for him, but for fantasy purposes by far. But Green Bay is three and six. Green Bay's chance of winning the the division is about zero percent. Green Bay can maybe sneak into a wild card, but at this point, it's it's hard. And if you're Odell Beckham and you can go to any team you want to right now, I. This is a question because I don't know. What are you going to prioritize? Are you going to prioritize getting some playing time in, getting that good film showing that you are back so you get a big contract, or are you going to pick a winner where you might be a halftime player uh, and try and go win another Super Bowl? I Probably think because, the latter see, because based on what he did and what his comments were in joining Los Angeles. I imagine it will be the same for Dallas. And so I look, just wonder if he needs to do that again now that he got the ring with you, the you Rams. Can, you can he's, always he's get more rings. Old, he's too. I don't think he's positioning for big contract. But the the Ravens to me are the are the team that needs him the most. That is a great team. That is a Super Bowl, uh, you know, contender. If he were to show up playing in Baltimore now, you've got Bateman out for the year. Uh, Deshaun Jackson obviously is is not anybody's answer at this point in time. I mean, they need a they need a wide receiver one desperately. Yeah. So to me, the teams you know kind of in contention, Bills, may maybe uh, the Jets. I don't know if if Beckham wants to go there to stick it to the Giants or not. The Chiefs are probably out because they just added Kadarius Tony. The Ravens, to me, I agree with you, Jason, that they make the most sense. Well, a return to the Giants makes the most sense. Does he want to go back? He's mentioned it. Has yeah. he? Yeah, okay. he's mentioned it. He's he, you know he basically responded to somebody. By saying, "Yeah, chat with my agent about that." Okay, I, I feel, yeah, he's kind of said that to like every player, though. That's, I'm just talking about teams in contention that need a wide receiver. Nobody needs one more than right. the Giants. Yeah, do. it's 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 very low. I mean, maybe the, the Buccaneers, I think, might be a dark horse here to to add him, where they just you know they have two great wide receivers, but they could probably use a third. Uh, other options Ooh, for spot one. starts: DeAndre Carter this week against San Francisco for the Chargers. He was coming off an illness, uh, so his involvement still six targets, five for fifty-three. I got a name. He's heating up. Oh, two weeks in a row where he has been very fantasy relevant. Oh my gosh! This just so happens to be after his opportunity has risen with the departure of DJ Moore and Christian McCaffrey and now he plays Atlanta which Again. is about as good um, as a matchup can be that's where he had 87 yards two weeks ago on nine targets I'm talking about TMJ Lockjaw Terrace Marshall Jr. I was wondering if that was going to get pushed because I feel like Kyle DeBorgogan has he's been, been pushing it he's been desperately trying to get the Lockjaw out there due to the initial TMJ uh, debilitating jaw problem. Yeah, people with it really, it sucks. Yeah, they're like into it. So, just where where are we at on 
lockjaw. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has to do something more to have any kind of nickname here. But the- he has to do more to get a debilitating <laughs> nickname. Oh man, maybe he's already earned this. I one. think he's already been locked jaw. <laughs> yeah, but we haven't been able to loosen that job for years. <laughs> but he's in. He's getting his opportunity. The targets are there. The matchup is there. This, I agree this that is, well, he's worth playing. You're supposed to be an unbiased participant on this show. Put the camera on to Kyle right now. <laughs> We've got we. You know he helps us with the show, Doc, prepping stuff up. You're just cruising through the waiver wire at wide receiver. We got all these names that we had sorted out in the office yesterday. Kyle is smiling so big uh, right yeah, now. He, because he knows he jammed this Terrace Marshall. <laughs> He's got two bullet points. How many? Let me ask you a question. How many bullet points did you put in there on the rest of all the wide receivers? Who leads the league in oh, Enzo gosh. targets the last two weeks, Andy? <laughs> oh, locked up. The answer is nobody. You put no bullet points on any other wide receivers. One of the bullet points was I'm that. With you. I'm with you, Kyle. The other bullet point was literally just TMJ is heating up. You are a maniac. He is <laughs> widely available on your waivers. Of course he is, because this is a horrible trap. Yeah, DJ it definitely Moore, is. DJ Moore was a trap last week, and he's way better than Terrace Marshall. I would agree that Terrace Marshall is not going to actually be great. Uh, that he, being They won't throw the ball three times this week against Atlanta. Uh, most teams throw the ball quite a bit against Atlanta. So I'm going to disagree. I, I actually do think Terrence Marshall is someone that you can play in a desperation spot start this week because of the matchup, because of what we've seen of his actual usage in the two weeks minus those other two players. I mean, he's a 22-year-old wide receiver that hopefully can get better. I mean, I know we've written him off for dead, and, and more than likely with the quarterback situation in Carolina, his career is not going to be resurrected to what we – once hoped but there is at least path um yes. i think the question is talent like when he came into the league there were a lot of people myself kyle really really did like terrace marshall um so did the panthers yeah i mean he was a round second. a round two draft pick uh teammate of justin jefferson jamar chase and terrace marshall jr was the third on that awesome offense and he's not he's not he's not as good so where are you ranking him like Donovan Peoples-Jones, Michael Gallup, Mike, uh, McCole Hardman, where do you have Lockjaw slotted in there? So, I, of those players, um, I have... You're going to grit your teeth? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grit my teeth, and I'll, I'll put Terrace Marshall um, in above uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. I will take Wandale above him. I'll take uh, Hardman if I need to start this week uh, above him, and then Terrace Marshall. Uh, could you pre please pronounce the full TMJ definition? Uh, you know the descriptor. It's there? posted in our Slack. Yeah, if, if you, you would just give it what it rip. stands for with TMJ, just in case someone's confused. Uh, yeah, let me let me pull that up. Uh, see if I can find it here. <laughs> just go in the. It's in, it's in the uh, okay. Uh, yeah. No, I got this. Yeah, no, yeah. No problem. Uh, it's a temporal mandibular or joint dysfunction. <laughs> um, got it. So that's what this. That's what uh, Terrace Marshall. I Jr. see why they for. shortened it. Uh, is there a chance Brandon Cooks is on people's waiver wires this week? I'm Temporal mandibular. mandibular. <laughs> yep. Uh, maybe. I think there's a chance because he 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 was back in the building right after their Thursday night game, and uh, he'll be playing. I mean, he needs game checks, and they lost Nico Collins already for the season. He's a drop it like it's hot. So candidate. pay attention to see if Brandon Cooks is out there. I'd rather pick up Brandon Cooks and play him over. Oh, if he's there, everybody I'd, but Josh Palmer and maybe McCole Hardman. I would play him over McCole Hardman. I, he he would be number two if he's on waivers. Um, you can drop Alec Pierce. Yep. You could drop Robert Woods. You can yep. drop Drake London. Yep. Uh, you can uh, probably. I mean, Traylon Burks. His name keeps coming up, but like uh, I was going to bring his name up because uh it it was just reported you know we haven't had any news I I looked for him last week and he hadn't really been in the building but there was just a report that I saw that he uh could be activated for his 21 day window here soon and uh, the I mean you we just brought up teams that need a wide receiver and we somehow did not bring up the Tennessee Titans who cuz I don't think Beckham wants to go to five passing attempts a game <laughs> Well, he might. completions. Yeah, they were rumored. 
Yeah, that that team is desperate for a wide receiver, and this is the wide receiver that they brought in to uh, step up into that number one role. He just has been injured. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a tough one because that team is. Uh, I mean, he he's the best player they got. He's a stash, but like, it, but he hadn't had a top fifty-five week. Comparing Traylon Burks to Odell Beckham Jr., right? Like Traylon Burks at this point in their careers, right. uh, both of them are giant question marks. Are are they good? But like, I would take the young, unproven stud athlete who is on a roster that is a roster that needs him um, over the hopeful coming back off of a another. Uh, knee surgery who doesn't have a team yet I, I think Traylon Burks is probably a better signing all right we're gonna take a quick break and come back with some running backs all right let's dive into what running backs we are welcoming into the fold this week I think the headliner here Jeff Wilson yep. getting 50 percent of the snaps in Miami uh, I think you saw pretty much what you're going to see this past week with, as far as a recipe for the rest of the year. Probably going to be a little bit of a hot hand approach uh, from these two running backs, Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. But look, flip the script here. If Raheem Mostert's sitting there on waiver wire, he's the top pickup of the week. Agreed. And Jeff Wilson, his involvement, the targets, you know, there's a pretty decent chance I think Jeff Wilson's more valuable simply because of passing game involvement. So Wilson to me is a, a must pick up considering running back situations in your league. Yeah, he's a one A one B situation there, and because it's going to be a fifty fifty timeshare, I believe half of the weeks you're going to be disappointed if you start most or if you start Jeff Wilson, you'll be disappointed that it just he didn't get a touchdown and there wasn't enough. But you're going to get fantasy points from a good offense, and the upside is always there. He's literally just about the only player that you could pick up off of waivers and say, I can start this guy, I know I'm going to get fantasy points, and I have an opportunity for something big to happen without an injury ahead of him. So, yeah, I, I agree. He's the clear number one running back pickup. Yeah, and, and if Moster went down, Jeff Wilson sure. would be a, a monster play. Yeah, the he, schedule is also very nice for them. Uh, what are they this Cleveland, week? then the bye week, then Houston. Yeah, and then San Francisco, which is tough, but then the Chargers right after that. They are. Uh, they did both score this past weekend. Together, Gus Edwards, Rashad White, Kyron Williams. Thoughts on those three names? About half on uh, Gus Edwards and Rashad. So Gus Edwards is difficult because I, I mean, it's just just my personal belief. I think he's a better running back than Kenyon Drake, but Drake had, Drake's coming off a very solid game where he was the focal point. What was twenty four carries? Did he really get twenty four? I mean, it was just it was nonstop with him. Uh, the thing you have to go on is that Kenyon Drake had a great game. Gus Edwards got activated, and then the sh the carries immediately shifted over that Gus Edwards was the leader. It was still a timeshare, but Gus Edward Edwards was at the top. He got the high-value touches, scored the two touchdowns, and then unfortunately hurts himself the next week. So it's it's very difficult to know what to do with Gus and Kenyon Drake, especially with them going on to the bye week. They're just going to be sitting on your bench. Well, and I believe John Harbaugh came out this morning and had some comments regarding J.K. Dobbins. Kyle, did he you... said he's he said he's going to be it's going to be great to have him you know running around in like three to four weeks. Oh, he did. Yeah, he said his surgery was a smashing success with whatever that means for surgeries. It means I I read through it is about the uh, the problem was a buildup of scar tissue, and so the the danger is you go you do the cleanup, does the scar tissue start to reaccumulate and they said everything's looking pretty good but then there was but it'll be a while yeah so yeah i imagine a committee of gus and and now that drake has had three out of four games that he's gotten into the end zone uh or i don't know if he got in the end zone the first week but he had 20 some fantasy points probably did so it, it could be a committee could be a tough situation when yeah. you have a run you know a quarterback is going to run for 100 but if one of them is featured they're they're a huge touchdown upside every week Rashad White needs more run in this offense. I mean, you've had three straight weeks where Leonard Fournette is under three yards of carry. So I would not be surprised to see him get more play yeah. in the offense. This has been rumored around Tampa Bay as well, even going into this last week, that you could start to see it become a 50-50 timeshare. 
Um, that being said, Rashad White won't be someone that you can really start, even if he works his way into a 50-50 timeshare. This, this offense hasn't been scoring touchdowns. The offensive line hasn't been opening things up for the running game. You really do still – I see him still as a stash for a Leonard Fournette injury as opposed to just someone that I can play in a timeshare. But he can, he could work his way. Like he, he Right now he is a very important insurance stash, but he actually has a path where you know, guys like, uh, like Isaiah Spiller, who has now moved into being the, the player behind Austin Eckler for the Chargers, but Spiller is not going to overtake Eckler, where Rashad White, by the end of the season, it could happen. Yeah, and the loyalty, I think, without Bruce Arians there to Leonard Fournette could be a uh, – it could be shorter. Uh, and he's got juice. I mean, it, it, when you go and you watch these older running backs run and then you hand the ball off to somebody like Rashad White and or you see Damian Pierce run the football, the young legs, uh, they can they can flip the script on the season really quickly. Kyron Williams did not come off of the injured reserve – Still within his 21-day activation window, they are still desperate in, desperately in need as well in Los Angeles for a running back. Cam Akers got some touches yep. last week, boys. Five, yeah. five big carries. And Daryl Henderson, how many yards did he end up with? Three. Wow. That's a very Cam Akers in the line. Um, Daryl so Henderson had, had some good runs in, in that game. Um, Kyron is one of the interesting names because this team is so desperate and in, in such need. That being said, I don't think that they would ever just turn it over. I think that even when they are when they have this desperate need, they're still going to use a massive committee here. So even though I liked Kyron Williams' tape and I'm excited about him coming back, this is obviously an injury that has kept him out a long, long time. Uh, I can't imagine that he's going to be someone that is activated – and all of a sudden just takes a starting role in a week or even two weeks. So while I've got hopes for like Kyron's future, he's not really a redraft guy I'm I'm too hot and bothered by right now. All right. Uh other names of consideration here at running back. Deion like, Jackson. Yeah, he's probably worth picking up. Plays the Raiders. It Should was a be a lot nicer. It was a rough game against the Patriots. He also had the knee injury, which he seems to be okay from that. And the, the matchup against the Raiders is, is you know, uh, okay, I guess. But, do, like, do you really have faith for the Colts starting running back, assuming that Johnny Taylor doesn't play again? Because if Jonathan Taylor's back, Deion Jackson is, is not even close to playable. But if Jonathan Taylor remains out, Colts running back. You really yeah. want to go in there? Yes. Yes, I do. If Jonathan Taylor is out, I want to go okay. in on, Which uh, guy? Deon, on Deion Jackson because um, it wasn't like we couldn't see last week coming ahead of time. The, the New England Patriots are the best run defense in the league. That was a very difficult matchup. Also, now you got Jeff Saturday. So this offensive oh, line, there we go. I mean, it's fixed. There what it about is. Zach Moss being active for this game? Could complicate the clarity. It could. Jordan Wilkins was up last week. Philip Lindsay's involved. Yeah, it, it certainly could. And and in his own right, maybe you want to pick up Zach Moss um, as the stash. Maybe oh, he the becomes deepest of deep the, leagues. the starter. In the deepest of deep leagues, I still would not do that. <laughs> but you can. You mentioned Isaiah Spiller, 7 for 29. Uh, these We're getting into kind of stash territory. Elijah sure. Mitchell is a uh, – Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. Yep. Elijah Mitchell steps up stash. I think if you can pick him up off of waivers, I mean, he's rostered still. A lot of people just threw him into IR spots, so sure. you're probably not going to be able to grab him. But if he's out there and you have CMC, you need to. Here's a big question for you. Would you just drop Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Isaiah Pacheco? <laughs> drop? Probably not. I mean, if, if, you, have to, if you have to make a move because you, you need a spot start immediately this week, then I guess so, but Clyde's last four games played. It, just so you can enjoy this with oh, me. Okay, good. Um, Bring the pain. The pa the pa uh, his last four games played. His pace is 119 attempts for 361 yards on the year. Okay, um, 17 receptions. So the milk has gone bad. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, probably. Three of those last four games, he has had five or fewer fantasy points. And 17% that is, of snaps. That is right after just he had 20, 13, 12, 21 fantasy points. And then he at least got a goal line carry. He didn't get in, and I talked about how terrible it was, but he still got that goal line carry, and he's on a high-powered offense. Uh, so I don't know that I would drop him. But the the last running back that I want to talk about, I mentioning him last week was Jalen Warren of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They had they were heading into the bye week last week, so it was kind of like, do you really want to pick him up or not? But go back to two weeks ago when they had the game, Najee again looked very inefficient. Jalen Warren looked like he had juice, and then later on last week we got word coming out of Pittsburgh saying they're going to try and figure out how to get Jalen Warren more involved. So I, I did some research into this because okay. I was in the position of having to potentially drop Jalen Warren and they could absolutely like, there's, there's a lot of talk in Pittsburgh. Oh, should Jalen Warren be starting? And if you look at the advanced metrics of when these two players are put in the same position against these early down uh, stacked boxes, right? Najee's more efficient. Okay. Najee's been better than Jalen Warren. That's not to say that like, even if you listen to Matt Canada talk, for the Steelers offense, they're like, Jalen Warren has been in positions he can succeed. He's playing, you know, running in downs where it's not predicted and expected. Well, why don't they put Najee in those situations then where They've, he can succeed? Well, I, you, you see this a lot, right? You have those first, like Brian Robinson, every running down in Washington, sure, run it up the middle into somebody's butt, every single position that they put, uh, other running backs in for if you run on those down, you, you face less defenders. So uh, I'm not saying that Jalen Warden couldn't take over. I was thinking about this bye week going, well, is it time to make a change? Exactly. Or is it a week for Najee Harris to get healthier? First round draft pick, tough. I, I don't think that demotion is coming. Yeah, I don't think a demotion is coming either. He, he is, to me, a really good insurance back for if Najee goes down, Najee's obviously been dealing with injury, and I know we already brought the name up, but I just want to say it one more time. Isaiah Spiller, because it's a name that was forgotten, he was a, a a rookie running back coming in that a lot of people were excited about, fell to the fourth round, I believe, and then got injured. So he hasn't really been there, but he got back, and last week it kind of seemed like he is the clear backup now. Sonny Michelle is so bad <laughs> um, and has been for a long time, so... Isaiah Spiller, if you are, you know, he is just an insurance back, but if you're the Austin Eckler manager, he's the guy that I would probably go out and put on the end of your uh, bench if you have an extra spot. And I get in super, super deep leagues, Kylan Hill, Green Bay Packers, should Aaron Jones be more hurt than he's letting on? Tight ends to welcome into the fold. There are some good ones to pick up. Greg Dulcich coming off the bye week yep. should be the priority. Tight end for the Denver Broncos, early round draft pick and has been targeted and targeted downfield uh, by Russell Wilson in the absence of Cortland Sutton of late. Kate Otten seems to be more and more involved in the Tampa offense. You know that – Play Seattle. You know that Brady loves oh, no. the tight end. Five for 68 and a touchdown last week, and they're going to – this was one of the games this week. I think Tampa actually whoops Seattle. So, Ooh. so consider that an that's, early week. That's a hot take uh, prediction. I'm sure they will be what favored. What is the line? It's Tampa Bay minus two and a half. Yeah, at I was going to say that can't be my almost upset, but I do think that they will cover that line and get things together this week. Interesting. Um, Isaiah Likely. Yeah, it, he's going into the bye week, and you expect Mark Andrews to be back once that happens. But he's obviously been great in a dynasty league. Now that they are going into the bye week, if you are the Mark Andrews manager. Go make a trade offer for Isaiah Likely. It's probably more valuable to you than he is to the opponent who pretty much isn't going to be able to play him for most of the time, but that that's certainly what I would do. I, I tried to do it, and I was denied. That's right. The Seattle-Tampa game is in Munich, Germany. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> Cole Komet, Evan Ingram would be bottom of the barrel. Uh, I think I like Komet's just as a touchdown dart throw. Detroit, Atlanta. Detroit Atlanta, those are nice matchups. Evan Ingram probably has a higher baseline than Cole Komet. Cole Komet had six targets this last week, had a really good game, but I think that's only the second time he's been over three targets on the season. So I'm not too excited. And even though Evan Ingram can always do what he did last week, which is nothing, 
as soon as people start him against Kansas City, you imagine they're going to have to throw the ball to ke- to just keep up with the Chiefs. He's a fine player. Yeah, I think I think with Schmevin the, the right. change in offense, I'm I'm more optimistic about Komet having opportunities. It's, I think it's possible. Yes. It'd be great for my best ball lineup. Two straight weeks in the top twelve for Mister Komet. Okay. Defensive pickups. Who are we welcoming into the fold to help your team this week? My favorite pickup is the New York Football Giants because hmm. okay. they're coming off the bye oh, yeah, week, yeah. and so nobody has them. They play against Houston. Uh, they can stop stop the run. So I think uh, the Damian Pierce offense, which is what it is, it's just Damian Pierce. I think at home against Houston, they're they're probably the sneakiest best pickup. Yeah, I I was really liking the Arizona Cardinals. Andy, you brought up the fact that the Los Angeles Rams um are the number one uh, team to play against for your uh, defenses, but they will be without Buda Baker, who's really the heart and soul of that defense. So maybe not. I and they're on the road. So I really like the Tennessee Titans. The Titans' defense is good. I don't know how. I give all credit to Mike Vrabel, uh, but they played very well against the Chiefs last week. Their run defense is outstanding, and they're playing against Russell Wilson and the inept offense of the Denver Broncos. So you you can't imagine that they're going to give up 30 points, plenty of sack and uh, interception opportunities there. And I would say the Raiders – they're they're a defense that we want to target almost every single week for our fantasy players against them, but they're playing the Colts, who with Sam Ellinger, they are inept. <laughs> he look they're they the Colts deserve this. Uh I'm not sure Ellinger no deserves maybe, no he he, he, has, he deserves to have his name pronounced properly. All right, Sam yeah, Ellinger. Ellinger. Sam Ellinger. Thank you. I mean this poor this poor chap. I know, I know. He's 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 living his dream. He's doing his best. I mean, his best, the best thing he had going was Frank Reich in his corner, and that guy's been kicked to the curb. Yeah. Uh, that was welcome to the fold presented by Samsung Galaxy. Galaxy Z Fold Four makes multitasking easy. Use it to check those player rankings on our website. Watch some highlights, view the trade targets, uh, improve your roster all at the same time on one screen. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. My risky business streaming target this week is Jared Goff against the Chicago Bears. I want a part of the Bears weekly shootout, which is what I think the rest of their season will be. Um, the over-under is 48.5, which is the second highest of the week. The Bears are 24th in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to the quarterback. They gave up a number four overall week to Tua last week. And Detroit... Top 12 in points scored, yards per game. I think they get some things figured out this week against Chicago, and I, I think it's good on both sides of the ball for that, for those quarterbacks. Yes, the other side of the ball is my start of the week, and really for the waiver wire You're full show. full stream ahead. Yeah, for the full stream <laughs> ahead. Uh, could be he the start of the week. Are, he yeah, probably already say, he's a little slip uh, of the tongue. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I, I see. Yeah, I see. Just, we're all jumping on the Justin Fields bandwagon. for Thursday. But um, on the waiver wire show, Justin Fields is my number one waiver wire pickup. Like e- even if I have a good quarterback and I don't think I need to start him, if he's on the waivers, which somehow he is still available in more than fifty percent of ESPN leagues, b- mind blowing. He's been on fire. Um, there was a great report talked about how on their bye week, their coaching staff went and looked at. I mean, this is Imagine. mind blowing. Imagine. Imagine they went and looked at the Ravens offense and uh, the the Texans with Deshaun Watson and the, and the Are you offenses listening, Cliff? of people Clifford, that, that Kingsbury, the mobile quarterbacks that said, what are they doing? Let's try to do what they're doing so successfully and they can do it. And they've unlocked his rushing. So he exploded last week. Stay in the flames. Detroit is a great matchup. Uh, there's there's don't overthink it. Well, let, let's overthink it. Um, if you're looking at picking him up, yes, you could burn a waiver priority, but how much fab would you spend if you already have a viable quarterback? If I already have a viable... Let's well, so yeah, Joe Burrow, because he's going into the bye, and you're saying, hey, I need to get a win this week. How much fab are you spending on Justin Fields? So if I've got someone going into a bye and therefore don't have a quarterback this week, I'm I'm going, I'll, I'll spend 25, uh, 30 on, on Fields. If I have Tua or someone where, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm starting Tua rest of season. He's been awesome. 
I'm still going after Fields, but I'm probably just going to, you know, put a five ten dollar bid in there and hope I can at, at worst keep him away from some other team that needs him. That's right. What, that's what I want right. to bring up is at like. Sure, the, the Chicago Bears in Justin Fields after these juicy matchups that they have, maybe they revert and they and Fields falls back on his face. That that could happen, or they keep ripping and Justin Fields turns into a league winning quarterback yep. Yep. that you do not want on your opponent's team, especially an opponent who's been you know they got like Kirk Cousins here, Aaron Rodgers there, Dak Tom here, Brady, Tom Brady, and they're like, ooh, Justin Fields. It would it would be catastrophic to run up against Justin Fields and in the, in the playoffs if they're stacked and they fix their quarterback. We, position. we have a team in our league of record that has Tom Brady at quarterback and everybody else is a gauntlet. And I am so pleased that that team did not pick up Justin Fields. Yeah. So my super streamer of the week. Oh man! It was, what are you doing, yeah, do, 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 do. guys? This is what he is, might not even play the whole game. Okay, that is a fair point. Uh, but I am going with. Andrew Dalton <laughs> against the – you guys said this with Davis Mills, fellas. It's all about the matchup. Yeah, but the underpants, you have to – I don't know if oh. you can carry them. I, these it, aren't steel. These are like this, uh, these some, are some new, new – Cement? No, uh, these are – these are. We'll, we'll go with some vibranium. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll I mean, this is a new right periodic now. table of underpants. He gets to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers are allowing the second highest yards per attempt behind only the Detroit Lions. The Pittsburgh have allowed a QB1 performance in six of eight – Weeks. I'm laughing because yeah, I think I think Kyle nailed this. It's not steel underpants this week. It's a steel diaper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna poop in it. Um, <laughs> I got. Here, I mean, you did pick big... Davis Mills, who's been awful this year. So. Yeah, but the difference is Davis Mills was going up against uh, the Raiders, which were terrible, projected to be terrible, continue to be terrible. Whereas the Steelers, when they're playing at home, and they are expected to have T.J. Watt back and off the bye. So I I. This is these are I like I'll I'll just say this right now because it could change for later. My current DraftKings lineup for this week has the Steelers defense in it because I think that they are underpriced without T.J. Watt having him back uh, against Andy Dalton. Look, I am I respect the steel diaper, Mike, but yeah. I will not abide by it. And uh, you that's... will, unfortunately, with a steel diaper, can't be removed. So if 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 the poop shows up in the steel diaper, I I am it's aware. permanent. I am aware, and it is not. It doesn't absorb. Yeah, very, very I, well. The steel does not absorb. The, you are wearing it. The the matchup, love it. I, the, Andy, you make a good point of watch the news. I don't understand this full commitment to Andy Dalton that they've just. I thought they'd make the change last night. Like completely really bypass Jameis yeah. Winston and be like, nope, Andy Dalton's clearly the better option. That's a strange deci decision to me, but it's what they've been rolling with. So if they're saying Andy Dalton's the starter, I think he's going to have success. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, that'll be a fun one to look back on. And uh, I think that does it for today's episode of the show. Tomorrow we have Ride or Die, the Thursday night preview, mailbag, lots going on. Make sure you check out our fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. And if you, if you need an extra episode of us uh, talking about lockjaw and steel <laughs> underpants, uh, you can check that out at jointhefoot.com as well. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting the show, for leaving us a review. It'll be a fun week. Good luck on your waivers, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.